Greetings, ladies and mantelgents, and welcome to this narration of the web series Three Fleets, taken from Reddit with the author's approval. If you're new to the series, there is a playlist listed in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Admiral Chang watched the prosecutor pace about in front of the podium. His strange, chirping, clicking language translated in near real time. The Admiral could see the lag in translation as the assembled parliament reacted in waves when the prosecutor would make a particularly awful point. The parliament chamber was a massive rotunda, and Admiral wasn't able to count the number of parliamentarians, but he had been told that there were just over 1,500. Looking up into the massive arching chamber, he had no reason to doubt it. The platform holding the Admiral and Captain Moore had multiple audio and video pickups to carry their voices and faces to every corner of the looming room. The prosecutor's platform was configured in the same manner, but some distance away. Now, the prosecutor said, late on the third day of the trial, I call Lieutenant Untranslatable proper now to the stand. A set of doors to Admiral's right opened and another bug of the same species as the prosecutor walked in and took the stand. A minor functionary administered some sort of oath. Lieutenant, untranslatable proper now. Please tell us your last posting and mission. I was posted on the untranslatable proper now ship's name as a senior communications officer, sir. We were ordered to the Turliac homeworld as a defensive screen against these uh, humans. The Admiral was mostly unfamiliar with the bug's language, but he recognized disgust even across the involutionary camp. Can you tell us about the mission, Lieutenant? The prosecutor asked. Yes, sir. Commodore Andromfleetable Provenal made contact with the human ship. Their admiral told us that he had no intention of standing down. He blamed us for some historical crime. He said that he and his people were looking for revenge. Now, Lieutenant, did your Commodore give these invaders an opportunity to surrender? Yes, sir. The Commodore practically begged the aliens to leave. Nobody in the service looks forward to a battle. And what was the aliens' response? He opened fire, sir, and they made a massive fleet, and we were hard-pressed immediately. Our intel did not accurately estimate the size of their fleet, sir, but we're used to bad intel. There was a few chuckles from the Parliament at this. The Admiral supposed bad intel was one of the universe's constants. How did the battle end, Lieutenant? The prosecutor asked. We fought for several days. Space battles are slower than what you see in the vids. We lost hundreds of ships, including several capital ships. The humans were the ruthless fighters. They had little experience in fighting above a planet. That much was clear. But what they lacked in experience, they made up for in enthusiasm. Every one of them was determined to hurt us. They lost more ships than us, but that only seemed to encourage them more. I've never seen an opponent to set on destruction. The lieutenant shook his head as though lost in a memory. That wasn't how they won. After the battle, they reviewed the sensor logs and found a small ship launched from the Admiral's heavy cruiser. The prosecution enters logs 15562P to Exhibit 7. The prosecutor nodded to one of the assistants at the table. A data package blipped on the terminal of every parliamentarian and on the captain's pad. Please continue, Lieutenant. The small ship couldn't have held more than a few of the aliens. It latched onto the Commodore ship and somehow uh, it cut its way in. Approximately one, one hour, hour later... The untranslatable proper noun ship name began falling out of orbit. It fell into the planet and their engines must have been set to overload. The explosion ignited the atmosphere of the Turlia homeworld and all but destroyed the land below it. If it please the court, the prosecution enters video recording 9913B17QR as Exhibit 8. The prosecutor tapped a button on the digital display in his hand. The lights in the room dimmed, and a giant holographic projection materialized in the middle of the chamber over the Admiral's head. It showed the Tony Cornwall and thousands of ships around it. The biggest ship blinked red and started falling towards the planet. As it fell, the Admirals heard several gasps from the parliamentarians nearest him. Just as it happened in real life, the holographic display showed the sterilization of the Tony Cornwall. The fires raged, the air burned, the land erupted, and the Turlic were extinguished. The Admiral held his face carefully neutral. When the world was finished burning, the hologram slowly faded from view. The lights came back up much more slowly than they went down. The room was as silent as a grave. The prosecutor said, Your Honours, given the lateness of the hour, I request we recess for the day and finish the witness testimony fresh tomorrow morning. The three justices glanced at each other and then nodded. The Chief Justice called for a recess. 
The Admiral was escorted back to his holding cell by burly guards that had been his ever-present companions ever since arriving at the manor. That evening, sitting at the dinner in the briefing room, the captain said, The prosecutor is pretty slick. The humans had installed jammers and white noise generators so that they could speak in privacy, without worrying about the union eavesdropping. What do you mean, Captain? The Admiral asked. We dragged out the morning testimony on purpose. All those questions that we couldn't figure out the purpose for. They were stalling tactics. Then, in the afternoon session, he timed it so that a giant hologram of a burning planet was the last thing everyone saw before they left for the day. They'll think on it that all night. Hell, they're probably discussing it at dinner, just like we are. My, aren't the humans such awful creatures, that sort of thing. He's got more questions for the lieutenant tomorrow, so it doesn't look like he spiked the ball too much. Probably a few mop-up questions. How bad is it for us? It's not critical, but it certainly doesn't help. It might be enough to sway those on the fence, but it's not going to move someone from a quit to convict. Everyone already knew the basics of this case. This just made it more visceral for them. Some of them are probably wondering that if we could do something like that to the Terniac, what's to stop us from doing it to them? We've got to make sure that they don't see all of humanity as a threat. You think this trial is about more than just me and one battle, don't you? It has crossed my mind. Mine, too. It is just one old admiral on trial here for an entire species. If I lose, I can carry that. But if humanity loses, that I cannot abide, Captain. Me either, sir. Especially with the third fleet gone, Captain Moore said. The Tuliak invaded Earth by happenstance. A Union invasion will be due directly to our accusations here. Even if we win this trial, how do we know that they won't make a political decision to eliminate Earth threat? Afraid that's about my pay grade, Admiral. My job is to keep you out of Union prison, or at least at a reasonable incarceration. True enough, Captain. Unfortunately, this is not above my pay grade. The Admiral ate the last few bites of dinner without tasting them. He opened his mouth to speak as a coughing fit overtook him. The captain stood up to help, but the Admiral waved him off. Are you all right, sir? Captain Moore asked. The Admiral nodded as he regained his breath. His face was reddened and his eyes were watery. Yes, Captain. He managed to get out before a few final spasms overtook him. Yes, the Admiral said when his breath returned. Yes, just a bit of a coughing. This is related to Dr. Almeida's treatment. I wish you would tell me more. I might be able to get you some help. Maybe even transfer to a better quarters. It's nothing, Captain. The following morning, the prosecution continued his questions of the lieutenant. Lieutenant, when we ended yesterday, you told us of how the humans had destroyed the Turniac homeworld. Could you tell us what happened next? Yes, sir. We had called for reinforcements when the battle seemed to be dragging on. We had underestimated the humans. A mistake we'll never make again. The lieutenant said as he glanced over to the Admiral. The 307th showed up a few hours after the Turliac was destroyed. Seeing he was outnumbered, the Admiral surrendered conditionally. The commander of the 307th agreed to his terms. And what were those terms, Lieutenant? At the end of the negotiations, the Admiral agreed to surrender peacefully if his crew were allowed to return to their homeworld. Their ships, except those needed to transport the survivors, would be sent to an intercept course to the local star. It seems that leaving that many enemy combatants alive and free would be dangerous. Why did your fleet agree to it? Objection, your honors, Captain Moore said. As skilled as the lieutenant is, there is no way that he's privy to command decisions. This is hearsay. The three justices confirmed for a moment before overruling. Captain, the prosecution will be given latitude in this manner. Thank you, your honors, the prosecutor said. Please, lieutenant, why did Union Fleet allow all of those humans to return home? We found out that there weren't that many humans. Most of the ships were highly automated. Their entire crew could fit into three of their supply ships. There were murmurs throughout the parliament at this. But surely your fleets with reinforcements could have destroyed them. Maybe. The humans had already shown that they were willing to die if it meant that they could kill one of us. While we may have been able to win, it would have cost us heavy losses. By taking their ships, the commander of the 307th felt that would resolve the threat with the least amount of losses. Nothing further, your honors, the prosecutor said. Captain Moore stood up and approached the witness stand. 
Lieutenant, you said that you were a communications officer, yes? Yes. At any point during the incident, did you detect any communications from the human fleet back to Earth? I'm sorry, I, I don't know that word. Earth, uh, the human homeworld. Did you detect any communications back to the human homeworld? Not that I recall. So Admiral Chang, after accomplishing his mission, peacefully surrendered to Union forces. Apparently, the lieutenant said, and he didn't call for reinforcements, didn't call for help. Not that we could tell. Lieutenant, are you familiar with the Turliac? Objection, your honors, the prosecution said. The lieutenant's familiarity with another species is not the issue here. The admiral's crimes against that species are... That species, the Turliac, are the very basis of all this accusation, Captain Moore said. The three justices conferred amongst themselves. Overruled, but tread carefully, counselor, the chief justice said. Thank you, you your honors. Now, Lieutenant, are you familiar with the Turliac? Some. The invalid union is quite large. We have many worlds with vast resources and lots of people. Captain Moore did not miss the implied threat. I'm sure you do, but let's talk about just one world and one people. The Turliac. What do you know about their culture? I know it doesn't exist anymore, thanks to you humans, the Lieutenant said. What about previously, say, um, 30 Earth years ago, the Captain asked. The translator automatically made the conversation to local measurements for all the species watching. All I know is that they had several colonies and were good fighters. We fought alongside them for centuries. Good fighters, several colonies. How did they found those colonies, Lieutenant? Objection, the prosecutor said. Now we're now giving history lessons instead of conducting a trial. The Lieutenant brought their history up. I'm following the thread, Your Honors, Captain Moore said. The Chief Justice glanced at one attorney to the other. We'll allow it, but wrap this up, Counselor. Thank you, Your Honors. Turlier Colonies, Lieutenant. The Lieutenant sat for a moment without answering. I believe they focused on inhabited worlds. Inhabited worlds, you say? And what happened to the inhabitants of those worlds when the Turlier arrived? The Lieutenant looked at the Prosecutor and then back at Captain Moore. Uh, I believe that they were assimilated into Turlier society. Assimilated? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Could you clarify? Objection. Cost and answered, the prosecutor said. We grow tired of this, Captain, the Chief Justice said. As do I, Your Honor. I'm sure everyone in this room know who the Turnic were, but I need this on the record. If the Lieutenant would be so kind as to say it, then we can move on, the Captain said. The Chief Justice looked at the Lieutenant and nodded. They were slaves. Thank you, Lieutenant. So the Turnier invaded inhabited worlds and turned the population into slaves. Is that right? Yes. Was this a secret? No. Everyone knew this. So the Invalid Union approved, at least tacitly, of the Turnier turning entire worlds into breeding pens for slaves. Yes. I, I wouldn't know. I'm not a politician. Yet, when one of the slave races decided to put a stop to it, the Union leapt to the defense of the Turnier. Is that right? I suppose. You suppose. You were there, Lieutenant. You were fighting on the side of the slavers, were you not? I was following orders. Orders to defend the slave empire. Orders to defend the Union. You don't get to attack a member world. Certainly not from some backward primitive world like Earth. You're dangerous, you humans. You stole Union technology to build your ships and turn those weapons against us. So what if the Turlier held a few dirt eaters as slaves? They're better off. They never would have made it off their worlds if the Turlier hadn't come. The Union is the most advanced civilization in this galaxy, and it is our right to rule over the lesser races. The captain stood still, hands at his side, staring at the lieutenant. You believe the Turlier have the right to enslave other races? That the entire Union can enslave other races? You're goddamn right! End of chapter. This is a special thank you to the one, the only, the legendary Erak Hino, who has become the only Tier 6 patron. I just want to thank the T5 patrons and channel members. Bob the Dragon, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Australia the Dreamer, Trigan95, Pure Giol, Meridian117, Elithia, Jordan Buxbaum, Angry Marine, Albard and Gasta, and Barky. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below, both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.